if I can get that one big credit, just one hit, that would change everything. Right? 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 Welcome back, y'all. My name is Travis Ference, a Grammy-nominated recording engineer and mixer with nearly 20 years of experience. And today, I want to talk about what I've learned from working on hits. More specifically, some of the myths that I used to believe about having big credits. For the context of this video, we should first define what is a hit. Younger me would define a hit as being directly related to commercial success. Did it go number one? Did it go platinum? Has your grandmother heard it on the radio, etc.? Now, older me would define it a bit differently, but we'll get to that later because the definition I just laid out is definitely the way 99% of us are going to think about this. The first myth is how you get hits. A lot of people believe that once you work on one big record that you just work on more and more of them until you're amongst the ranks of the engineering greats. And although that is true to a certain extent, it's not having the big credit that's gonna get you more big gigs. Because for one, nobody can just make something a hit. Nobody knows whether an artist or a song is gonna resonate with people. As much as labels and producers like to think they can make a hit, it's just not possible. You can only set yourself up for a chance of having a hit. And that is the secret to working on big records, positioning. The only way to work with big artists or get big credits is to give yourself the opportunity to do so. When I started out in studios in 2006, the obvious choice was to get a gig at a major studio someplace you know is going to have big artists coming through it. And although my early days as a runner at Capitol did not get me any big credits, they did get me the opportunity to land a gig engineering for a producer. I remember the day he asked me to work for him full time. <laughs> he said something along the lines of, everything I do goes number one. And initially I thought, wow, this guy's super cocky. But I also thought, yeah, let's do this. So obviously, everything we did did not go to the top of the charts. But most things we did at least hit the charts. And I ended up getting my first number one album at 25 with a mix credit on the Hannah Montana movie soundtrack. Now, whether you think that's cool or not isn't the point. The point is that it was a big deal for me at the time. I was fully expecting to keep riding the hit train long after that. And although I worked on a lot of fairly big projects, I wouldn't see another chart-topping album until four years later when I recorded a few vocal lines for Yours Truly from Ariana Grande. So I went from mixing to Barely engineering. Definitely not the progression 25-year-old me was expecting. So to return to this idea of positioning, the only reason I had any of these opportunities is because I navigated myself to working for or with people that were working on projects for major labels, big artists, movie studios, etc. That Ariana Grande album was her breakthrough album. When we did those vocal fixes, nobody knew it would be a hit. But all the right pieces were there for the potential. And if you want to work on big records, that's the only thing you can do. The second myth is built around what having big credits says about you. You see it on Instagram profiles and websites, right? Platinum recording engineer or Grammy nominated. And you think, wow, they must be so busy or damn, they must be so good. It's nonsense. It's just marketing. I did it at the top of the video to get you to watch this far. And if you have watched this far, you should hit the subscribe button. And while you're down there mousing around, try the like button out as well. <laughs> I can't, I can't. I can't do that seriously. Anyway, so people advertise big credits because it serves a dual purpose. For one, it is essentially marketing for new clients. But new clients that are primarily not what I'm going to call music industry insiders. And I hate to divide the industry like that, but it's the truth. A decade ago, I could have said major label and independent artists. But these days, there are so many indie artists who are killing it that I had to come up with something else to say. So that's what I chose. And by insider, I'm referring to people that are in the major music scenes and are familiar with a lot of the people in those communities. So if you're not an insider, say you're a rock band from Nebraska, you recorded your own album, and you want to work with a really experienced rock mixer, then you're going to go credit surfing, and you're going to find people that worked on records that you love. Now, that doesn't mean that your record is going to sound like those records. So this idea that a credit is going to somehow define the result of what you're going to get is an absolute myth. What credits actually say about you is way more in line with what the industry insiders take away from big credits, which is that you can be trusted to work at a high level and deal with pressure, deadlines, etc. These people know that everybody plays a role in a project, so they aren't expecting your sound to be the sound of your credits. They instead expect you to work with the team to serve the music. Because big credits say way more about your integrity and your personality than they do about your skill. And that is why engineers and producers will and should advertise them. On to our third myth. 
big credits change your life. Now, this is a tough one for me. As much as I want to say no, I want to say yes as well. Because if you are positioning yourself to have opportunities to work on big records, then I do think your career is going to have the potential for an amazing upward trajectory, which would for sure change your life. But I still don't think that's going to be guaranteed, which brings me to kind of the point of this video. Big credits don't get you big credits. People get you big credits. So if you're doing great work and building trust with great people who are all working towards the common goal of making an impact with music, then I think you'll find yourself having some big credits. And I air quotes that one because I think this is where we should redefine what a hit is. Like I mentioned earlier, older middle-aged me has a different definition of hit. I wanted to get into recording and mixing because I wanted to make music that people would hear and react to, the same way I did when I was a kid with a Walkman. And it is likely that a percentage of those songs will be commercially successful, but I guess that the bulk of them would not be Billboard number ones or Grammy winners. So for me today, a hit is something that has an impact on people. It's a song that might exceed an artist's normal reach or step them up a level. Maybe it gets them a label deal or a huge sync. It could be a whole number of things, but the point is that it resonated with people. So if you can define what career-changing big credits would be for you, and you're willing to work to position yourself for those opportunities and then be accountable and follow through when they arrive, then I think the myth of big credits changing your life will be true. So if you thought this twist on big credits was interesting and you want more recording studio career advice, then check out this video where I break down every mindset and idea that has helped me in my career so far.